The MLB trade deadline has come and gone, and the Red Sox had a really interesting time, to say the least. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and we are officially back from vacation. I apologize for that little hiatus there, but we came back around the perfect time because the yesterday the MLB trade deadline wrapped up, and for the Red Sox, there wasn't a whole lot of movement, which I think upset basically everyone in the fan base, right? Everyone who wanted them to buy and everyone who wanted them to sell. It seems like the Red Sox have upset both sides. However, there was one trade that went down yesterday, which could have really interesting implications on the 2023 Boston Red Sox. So what we are going to do in today's video is essentially react and recap the 2023 Red Sox trade deadline. We're going to talk about one, the moves that the Red Sox did make, two, why everyone seems so upset with the Red Sox deadline this year, and three, Heim Bloom's response to all of it. But before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me thank you all very much for clicking on this one let's get into it Okay, so I think the best place to start is by talking about the actual trade that did go down yesterday. It was a trade that led to the Red Sox acquiring infield utility man Luis Urias from the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, Urias has been struggling a bit this year. Currently, he has just a 145 average with a 299 on base percentage and a 236 slug for the Brewers in 2023. However, that is in a very limited sample size of only 20 games. He was dealing with a hamstring injury very early on in the 2023 season and after that hamstring injury healed he hasn't quite yet got his timing right back at the plate because the good news here is with that trade is one that is an extremely small sample size to judge the entire ability of Luis Urias and two when Luis Urias is right and he is playing well he could be a really interesting option for the Red Sox up the middle because in his two full years with the Milwaukee Brewers he played about five maybe even six partial years with the Brewers but only two of them were full seasons seasons in those two full seasons Urias had a combined 244 average which is fairly decent right but he had a 340 on base percentage meaning he has a very good eye at the plate and knows when to take his walks which is a very encouraging sign he also had a 426 slug good for a 766 OPS or a 111 OPS plus so in the two years that he did play a full season in Major League Baseball he was about 11% more productive at the plate than the average player in baseball now over that same time span Urias hit 39 home runs 42 doubles and 122 RBIs defensively at shortstop Luis Urias is not very good defensive run saved wise he has negative six defensive run saved over at shortstop however the good news with that is that the Red Sox don't need a defensive shortstop right Trevor Story should be back within just a couple of days of this video coming out which means that the Red Sox have no real need for a defensive shortstop on this team what they could use is a defensive second baseman and Luis Urias over again those six partial years with two full seasons in there as well has two defensive runs saved at second base so he's a bit of an above average defender at second base and he's a guy who can bring a lot of pop to this lineup the Red Sox wanted right-handed power bats this is a guy whose swing could play very well at Fenway Park and in his last couple of weeks of AAA got his walk rate up to 19 percent and feels like he's starting to get his timing back on his swing so what the Red Sox did in this trade is they bought low on Luis Urias a guy who right now is not playing very well at the major league level but does have a lot of potential to do well in a major league lineup now in exchange for Luis Urias the Red Sox gave up right-handed pitching prospect Bradley Blalock who was currently rated as the 37th highest ranked prospect in the Red Sox farm system according to Sox prospects he's currently playing at the high a level where this season he had a two 55 ERA so he was pitching well in seven games for the Greenville drive down there the problem with Bradley is that he was eligible for the rule five draft this offseason and because of his status in the Red Sox organization he probably wasn't a guy the Red Sox were going to protect so overall I really really like this trade actually you didn't give much up right you got a bit of a lottery type player back in return a guy who has struggled a bit this year but over the last couple of years has been an above average player in Major League Baseball with some pretty 
pretty good pop. He's a guy who defensively could fare well at second base. He's also very good at third base, right? He could be your sort of utility middle infielder, and he's a right-handed bat that you can sort of plug and play in this lineup. On top of that, too, he's a guy who can get on base. Red Sox love getting guys who can get on base, as we've seen this offseason. They've really prioritized having players who are have the ability to put together good at-bats and have the ability to create traffic on the base pass. At his best, Luis Urias can do that, right? His on-base percentage being 100 points higher than his average over those two full seasons is a really, really good sign. So at the end of the day, I really like this trade, but that's really the only trade the Red Sox made on deadline day. So the big question here is between him and the other couple of moves the Red Sox made over the last week, is that enough for the 2023 Red Sox? I think the biggest reasons why Red Sox fans are very upset right now with the front office is because really the Red Sox didn't make much of anything when it comes to legitimate impact moves for the 2023 team, right? Overall, in terms of the deadline moves for the Red Sox, they did make a couple, right? Obviously, the big one is the Kike Hernandez trade where you get two relief pitching prospects in return. One of them is now your 30th ranked prospect in the system, according to MLB Pipeline, and could be a contributor towards the end of the year. The other one also could be a contributor towards the end of the year. He's a little bit lower ranked on prospect rankings. They're trying to convert him into a starter, right? He's a bit of an unknown in the second pick, but those could be a couple of guys that could help you out, right? You got Yovera from the Giants, a guy who was DFA'd, who has pitched one inning with you so far since the deadline so that could be a yes or no type trade and then obviously you add your reason there that sort of buy low on a utility infielder type player and see what sort of comes of it in that in that sense but that's not really a whole lot in terms of moving the needle one way or the other for this 2023 team one of the biggest things the Red Sox said going into the trade deadline was hey we want to try and get a controllable starting pitcher that will not only bolster the 2023 rotation but can be a guy we can also build around as we move forward into 2024 and 2025 and that simply did not happen and yes this market in 2023 was very very much on the seller side right but people were giving out a pretty decent haul for rental pitchers Verlander got a great haul Scherzer got a pretty good haul right even Lorenzen got a fairly good haul for what he was worth but at the same time too when you're talking about the Boston Red Sox trade deadline approach right now the Red Sox farm system is in a really good spot a better spot than it's been over the last couple even few years here and there are a lot of guys in the Red Sox system that are playing above potential right now they aren't all going to continue to do that at some point some of these guys are going to fall off and some of these guys aren't even going to be able to make an impact at the major league level at some point the Red Sox front office needs to decide hey one of these guys is going to be a guy that's worth investing in and one of these guys is a guy that we need to sell high on to me personally going into to this 2023 deadline, it really felt like the Red Sox were finally in a position to make that decision. To make a decision on, okay, we don't think Nick York will be an impactful player at the major league level, or okay, we don't think Blaze Jordan will be an impactful player at the major league level, right? And make a decision. And they simply did not do that this deadline. And that, to me, is the most frustrating part. It was expensive. And I get that, right? You don't want to give away too much for a team that's barely on the cusp of a wild card spot. But when your goal is long term, improvement, then it becomes a little bit of a different conversation. Being able to identify and pick out guys that are worth trading and worth holding on to is a major part of being a successful organization. And so far, the Red Sox have done a really great job of creating a pool of players to select and differentiate from, right? Trying to figure out who's worth to keep and who's worth to sell, but they haven't been able to get to that point yet. And I'm disappointed because I thought that this deadline may be the opportunity to do that. And even if you didn't have the same line of thinking as I did, I didn't think at any point they were going to be in on Scherzer. I didn't think they should have been in on Verlander. But if you're talking about the Pirates opening their doors for Mitch Keller, if you're talking about the White Sox opening their doors for Dylan Cease, those are guys that you could bring into this organization that would help the 2023 team as well as improve the 2024 and 2025 team. But 
even if you don't agree with me on that and you thought, hey, this is the deadline where the Red Sox need to sell expiring contracts and bolster their prospects so that they could be even more competitive in 2024 and 2025, that didn't happen either. So it's understandable that both sides of the equation right now are disappointed in what the Red Sox did at the 2023 deadline. And that doesn't even, even include what this could possibly do to the Red Sox clubhouse, right? Because over the last couple of weeks, you've heard from really key pieces of the 2023 team. Kenley Jansen spoke out about it. Justin Turner spoke out about it. Rafael Devers spoke out about it. He's never spoken out about a deadline before. He very specifically mentioned that, hey, we think we've been playing well enough to deserve some reinforcements on the pitching staff, right? Rafael Devers said that and just simply got nothing, right? You got a couple of relievers that could be helpful. You've got one reliever who's now on the major league team, but outside of that, he didn't really get anyone to bolster, to boost this Red Sox rotation at all, right? What does that say to the members of this clubhouse, right? Does it say, hey, I'm sitting in this clubhouse grinding day after day, trying to get to this deadline, trying to be a team that's worth investing in. And now that we're at that point, now that over the last month, we've had one of the best records in Major League Baseball, despite the fact that we've lost our last three games and you give us absolutely nothing, what's the point of fighting if the front office doesn't even believe that we could be a playoff team worth investing in, right? What kind of message does that send to this clubhouse? Because at the end of the day, these guys are professionals. These guys understand the business of baseball, but you can't help but feel that way and help feel like, hey, is the front office giving up on this team already halfway through the season, right? That's got to be at bare minimum the back of their heads. While this team is still very much in contention for a playoff spot, this could be a very bad thing clubhouse and morale wise. As for Bloom's reasoning, he did talk to media members yesterday and he was pretty upfront about what he was looking for. He talked about the fact that he was actively looking for a controllable starting pitcher, right? But he ended up saying, quote, ultimately, we didn't end up with a match on any of those pieces. The rental market was more active. We talked about those guys too. We didn't want to make a move just to make a move, which makes a lot of sense, right? You don't want to make a move just to make a move. You don't want to make a move just to, just to tell the world that your buyers at the deadline, right? And especially with this 2023 team where you're under the luxury tax, is this the team worth shelling out a couple of high level prospects for a Scherzer, for a Verlander, for a uh, Michael Lorenzen? Was it? I don't really know, but that that sort of line of thinking of I'm not going to make a trade just to make a trade is a very good line of thinking. But again, when we're talking about the top level prospects of the Boston Red Sox, a lot of them are having really, really great seasons. At some point, you have to be able to trust your scouting and development team to tell you, hey, these are the kids worth investing in. These are the kids we don't think are going to work out and make a decision. Was this deadline an absolute disaster? No, I don't think it was an absolute disaster. I think it could have been much worse, right? The Red Sox could have sold off James Paxson and Adam Duvall and gotten very little in return, right? They could have turned around and trade Verdugo and that would have pretty much sank any hope of a playoff spot for the Boston Red Sox. But now what you're doing is putting this team in a position where you're relying on guys like Sale, Hauk, Whitlock to come back and be real legitimate contributor, impactful players almost exclusively for the rest of the season, which isn't really fair to ask of a guy like Sale who hasn't really been able to stay healthy over the last, what, four or five years. Tanner Houck, who's a young pitcher coming back from facial surgery, right? Who's to say he's going to come back and be the pitcher he was before he left? And you're talking about Garrett Whitlock, who's been up and down both health and stat-wise throughout the entire 2023 season. That's a lot to ask of just three players to bolster this entire team's rotation. Now, there are also also guys currently on the roster that could take a step up, right? Chris Murphy has been doing really, really well as a bulk inning reliever. Nick Pavetta started last night and he gave you a really, really great performance, right? So you are going to be able to include all of those guys in what you're doing going forward, but it would have been really nice to not have to put the pressure that you're now putting on Sale, Hauk, and Whitlock that you could have avoided by getting a young controllable arm at the deadline. Now, do I think the season is over because of this? 
Absolutely not, right? Sitting here and saying, oh, the deadline sunk the 2023 Red Sox is just sort of a ridiculous thing to say because the Red Sox as a as a unit right now are still a very good team and you're getting Story back who I know a lot of people don't have faith in, but I promise you, trust me on this, Trevor Story will make an impact on this team both in the clubhouse and on the field. You are getting back Sale, Whitlock, and Houck and while the downsides are there, there is the upside that these guys come back and are true boost to this rotation my question is though with what happened at this year's deadline did they do enough and I think that's the big question everyone's asking right now and the only way we're going to be able to figure that out is to root for them for the next two months but that's just my opinion so let me know in the comment section down below one what did you think of the trades the Red Sox did make what did you think of the Red Sox not doing much else and depending on which side you were on buyers or sellers let me know what you thought overall of this year's deadline. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one and I will see you in the red seats.